Okay, so what I thought I would do is first kind of start talking about websites um, and what our offerings are. We have about seven different templates, but with those templates, they can make various changes. So just because the seven templates are, sounds kind of limited, the reality is that it's not. Because they go through and they just actually just, they can, they can search by, by, by property type, so by student, conventional, senior, so on and so forth. But they can make various changes. So I, what I did was, instead of kind of going through our least our gallery, I just wanted to kind of quickly show you, um, you know, they, they can choose theme options, things of that nature. I thought I would show you some of our actual websites that we've done and show you some various ones that are either a template that we provide or even some custom ones. So this is actually a template. And if you, if, and I can actually show you additional templates as well. But one thing that you'll notice is no matter the template, from one company to another or from one property to another, none of the templates look the same. And so if you're looking at this, it looks very sleek. So this is actually a custom, or excuse me, this is a template um, that we have provided for this particular company. If we kind of take a look at a couple of others, um, this is an actual custom website. So it's completely different than the template that you see. So we do provide both. And then if we take a look at this one, um, we also provide company ones. So if we're looking at a complete property management company, um, these are just some other additional temp templates, or, or not even, excuse me, not templates, but custom websites that we provide as well. So we can do it for a specific property. We can do it for a company. Uh, one of my favorites I always like to show is actually Gorman because this is a tax credit company, and this is all that they do, and it just does not even look like an affordable property or affordable company the way that they handle that. And so these are all websites that we've actually done for our clientele and customers so far. Now from there, um, went ahead and closing out of those real quick. From there, um, what we see from a prospect perspective is how do they search for our communities today? And they always start at Google. So, <clears throat> and this is kind of a segue into online leasing actually. So with that being said, we'll do an apartment search for dogs or cats or um, you know, maybe they're looking for a specific area or a specific location. So they'll go into Google, make that specific location. And with that, we have, you know, one of the top 10 ILSs out there, which is My New Place. So with that, we will always show up towards the top of Google with our ILS, our Internet Listing Source. So it's, when you see that, when they click into that, we take them actually directly to that Internet Listing Source. And this is an actual property that we've set up for our demo environment. Now, the difference between our internet listing sources and others out there is that we drive all traffic to the site website. So when you drive, when you actually are going into the very first, one of the first links that they can see is visit the property website. We, and that's huge for our industry is that we're always driving that. And we're the only internet listing search out, excuse me, only internet listing source out there that actually drives traffic to their actual website. This is another template that you see, so completely different than the template that we saw earlier. This is, again, one of our websites. And if we're kind of starting from an online leasing perspective, they can go through here, review things. This is also where they access the resident portal. So we're going to be kind of going through that process. So starting off first is a process. So if we jump into floor plans, <coughs> when we come into floor plans, um, as far as our online leasing went, we did a really big major overhaul to our online leasing. If you've ever seen our old versus our new, you'll notice there's a lot of differences. We made this much more of a shopping cup experience. We did a lot of studies with prospective residents. We went out and asked residents or, or, or prospective residents, prospects out there, what they'd like to see from an online leasing perspective. But we also worked really closely with our clientele to make this uh, very much more intuitive for their renters. And this is a very self-service process. So a couple things. Over here on the left-hand side, they have a searching feature that allows for them to, you know, shop. They can put in price ranges that they're looking for, lease terms. You'll notice it's very much kind of like an Apple or an Amazon type, type shopping experience for the renters. We also have featured homes. A couple other things that we added was the ability to compare. So they can do side-by-side -side comparisons from one floor plan to another. They can see pricing information. Maybe it's showing a different amenity or it's a different floor plan, they can make decisions based off of that. If they want to select that specific floor plan, they just go through. Now, this particular property does have our Yield Star price optimizer on it. So they can see you know, the various lease terms, what their offerings are. If there are specials, those would be listed here. We do 3D images floor plans. 
but they can take a look at the 2D image with you know the actual uh, floor size and all of that as well. A couple things as we scroll down here, we see apartment details, community features, as well as even community information. Nice thing about community information is a map, and it shows you know area schools, shopping that's around there. Um, there are some customizations that are able to to be in there. So if there's a restaurant that they don't want to be shown there, um, we can take those off things of that nature. So just kind of continuing on, some things that we found through our online leasing process is that we don't, we didn't want to get a ton of information from the renters. The renters felt very intrude, very it was very intrusive for them to answer, basically kind of give their blood type just to be able to get information regarding an apartment. So <clears throat> with that being said, um, we just get minimal information. Okay. So let me just kind of quickly type this information in for us. So all we ask for is first name, last name, phone number information, how did they hear about us, and who maybe have they been speaking to. enter in a guest card on new online leasing. Right. All right, so I think we might have had somebody un unmuted there for a second. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. So this is all, all we're doing right here is just entering in a guest card at this point. That automatically flows over into leasing and rent. There's nothing that the site has to do at this point. Um, they, how, how, they can, however, see exactly where the prospect is during the online leasing process. Give it just a second here. Here we go. Um, so, so really, I'm, I'm not going to take us all the way through the online leasing process. I'm going to kind of cut through it a little bit. But the, there are some things I wanted to point out before we get too far, um, which are right here. This is a different main difference right here. They can see it's kind of like their shopping cart, if you will. So if they add items, the price will increase or decrease based off what they're doing. So you can see I'm adding information here. Uh, when we go to pets here, it is just like you know leasing and the rents in the sense that if I add a pet, Automatic charges are going to be applied, deposits, pet fees, things that you know that, that we see charged there. When we talk about getting approved, um, again, it goes back to we wanted to get very minimal information. The, our renters felt like they were being, um, you know, that we were getting too much information just to get an approval process. So you'll notice here we're basically just asking for that basic information, um, which is their social security number, their date of birth, things of that nature. So. As we're kind of seeing here, we also get the breadcrumbs that tells us where we've been, where we're going. This is a full, in this scenario, this is a full online leasing scenario. So they can completely screen themselves. The screening only takes about 15 seconds. And they can even find their lease document. All of this information is flowing back and forth between leasing and rent. Um, while we're waiting, just a couple of things. They can add additional adult occupants, okay? And what's great about that is it will automatically email that additional adult occupant, um, asking them to log in and, and key in their information. Okay, so it's being a little slow right now. Um, I think uh, we all kind of get how online leasing works, so I'm not too sure if, if, if we want to continue on with this, Tracy. Do you, do you want me to wait or go ahead and move on? Sorry, I had myself on mute. Um, I think I think we're okay to move on, Emily. If you kind of talk about how a, a prospect, you, you mentioned it's very self-provisioning. A prospect can go online, go to the website, go to um, the an inter internet listing service and be driven, uh, hopefully, it's places um, versus something else, but be driven to the property website and then enticed to step through this process themselves, whether they are using online leasing basic or the full e-signature where they actually execute their lease documents. And then the other prospect and experiences that they can have on the web, 
everyone I think is probably pretty clear on that. If you touch on what the data looks like once it hits leasing and rents, I think that'll give give folks an idea how how the integration works as well. That's perfect. Um, so the only other thing I want to add is if you ever saw our online leasing versus our new online leasing, one thing you're going to notice is that we don't take them out of their current website. It's actually embedded within their web website. So that was that's a huge uh, that was a huge change for us, um, and it was actually it's actually more beneficial. So we're trying to keep the renters or the prospective renters in their website always. Um, and, and so you know just by only asking for a few pieces of information, um, we're we're seeing we're seeing less bouncing out of their website because we're at, you know we're taking them all the way through the online leasing process and, and it's automatically coming in. So how we see this being actually utilized, there's two ways that our online leasing is actually utilized. Um, yes, you have the renters that you know, lease online, you know, sight unseen. Those are kind of rare. A small percentage happens that way. The rest of them have come into the community and you know, have seen the community. And one of two things happen. They say, I'm going to lease online right now, or they want to lease right now, and they want to fill an application. So what our, what, our, what our communities are doing out there is they're sitting down with the prospective renter and having them fill out the online application with them, or they're handing them an iPad and doing it that way, or they're even giving them you know, the information to log back in as they go home. So they have multiple ways of getting here and, and making sure that everybody's doing that. But we see the trend being that basically no more kind of paper application, which we saw you know, a few years ago where everybody was doing that. Everybody is going through the online leasing process, no matter what channel that they're, you know, kind of happening. And Emily, if you if you scroll down, oh well, that's okay. I was going to say oh, if you sorry. if you scroll down a little bit, you can actually see where you can enter your. Well, you're on the next page, but on the main um, start page, you have a place where you can enter your quote number. So if you've given them, if they visited on uh, in person, and you've given them a quote out of leasing and rents they can enter that quote number and all of the data that's already in the system about them is pre-populated into the online leasing process. So um, again, it's very, very tightly integrated with leasing and rents, which our users are really embracing. So with that, if we kind of jump into one site leasing and rents for a moment, I'm just going to change my role here. They have snapshots that are going to help see where they are in the actual process itself. So if I were to go in and choose my, my dates, essentially, that I leased, right? Okay, that's the date that's happening. There we go. <clears throat> all, all, all applicants are going to be listed in here that have leased through this date range that's being entered in. So it makes that really easy for the actual renters, uh, or excuse me, for the um, leasing staff members to see exactly where they are in their process. So it's keeping track of all that information. Along with that, they can even sign their documents through here. So really, the, the kind of the next step for that leasing staff member would be to move them in, because sometimes that may be the very first time that they see that applicant or that person. So they could come in here and simply go and find their applicants. They could do it from the Today page. Um, or they can you know, come in here. And they just simply click View. And they're able to complete that, that move-in process all from here. So meaning I'm ready to move that person in. All my steps have been done because my renter did it for me. I may just have to complete any additional required tasks, you know, countersign the documents here all of that, and then I would be able to move this particular person in. Some, some really neat things when it comes to our online leasing, it does ask for renter's insurance. Um, and so they can make that a required item even through online leasing. So whether they're you know, utilizing us or even a third party, they can still ask those questions. And I think that's great as well. And, and as they're going through the online leasing process, it also, of course, respects all of the uh, screening scoring model settings. So yep. for those of you that haven't, are new to RealPage or haven't had a lot of experienced, experience with the overall one-site 
UI, you can see it's very intuitive. Emily kind of popped around on the Today page and then quickly went into the applicant record, was able to quickly from there drill right into the, the uh, person she needed to work on. We've, the, the developers have made this and business analysts have made this very intuitive. So even if you're not someone who has a lot of experience with leasing and rents, you can, you can get in there and figure it out. <clears throat> All right. So, so Em, you might want to, and before you jump into a lot more leasing and rents, you might just want to point out a couple of the high, the, the highlights or main features of the one site shell and the UI that we've all come to know and love. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks. So, <clears throat> if we were going back to kind of, so, you know, we talk when we're talking to prospective clients. We really are very big on talking about the Today page and making sure that they understand that, you know, 60 to 80 percent of the site's activities can be handled and managed from the Today page. So we talked a little bit about that a minute ago with, with the online leasing activity snapshot and documents awaiting signature. So we've all known this, but we were really are trying to make sure that our clientele understands that. And so when we are, are demonstrating or even training to our clients, we really want or, or making sure that that's the message that we're sending out there that they can, you know, enter in a new prospect from, from the Today page, they can find other persons, but they don't have a lot of clicks. That's a lot of times what we hear from our, our, you know, our prospective clients that we're trying to sell to that, you know, other systems, they have a lot of clicks. So we, it's, it's always something that we have really going for us um, in, in, a, in a demo, and it's just how easy and simple our system is. And then also some other big factors for us is that, you know, the, um, help menus that we provide. Our clientele love this. Um, they think this is great. They are also very big into the client portal as well. And the fact that we give, you know, free downloadable documentations and that we listen to our clients from, a, from an enhancement perspective and then they can, you know, put all that information in via support ticket and client portal and, and, and are able to see all that information. Another big factor for us that, that um, I see helps us win deals, I think, is our learning, our free on-demand learning. They love this they, because, you know, they may not have an internal department, training department, or they may, but they may not be able to get those people into training. And so this gives them, you know, when they hire somebody new, some free on-demand learning, very easy to use. And I would encourage any of you guys to go in, if you're new to, to one site or you're new to RealPage, these are great. They're only like 10 or 15 minutes, and they're interactive. I, so it's just a great tool that we provide for them. Now, just kind of quickly as far as the tab. Um, prospects tab, this is where all of their guest cards are housed. So they can you know, either enter in a new guest card or, of course, go in and manage their current guest card. As far as some, some, some features that are very beneficial to our clientele is the fact that we allow for automatic follow-up. They can set that up, and it will send them a reminder on their Today page saying, hey, you need to follow up with this prspective renter. And in the industry, following up with, with prospective renters are huge because if they're on the phone calling them, talking to them, you know, just having conversations with them, they're more likely to lease at that particular property versus someone who completely ignored them. So we are able to do that and handle that. Um, when you click view into either a prospect applicant or resident, it takes them to that record. So this is what a prospect at a glance page looks like. Some, some neat... Uh, Things that we offer are free e-brochures. These are huge in our industry. Uh, these are customizable, so they can put in their own pictures. These can be emailed to the actual prospective renter as well. This is really big. Um, the quote process is also a very big selling point to us. Nobody else offers that. So they come in here and they check availability. Basically, it locks. So, so think about this, right? You're, you're a prospective renter. You come out and you're basically going to, you know, get a quote. Back in the day, what we would do is we would write this information on a brochure. Well, anybody could write that information in. This is um, just a scenario of this is an actual piece of paper or document that we're emailing them that is that is saying this is your rent. This is it's good for it's X amount of days, and you know, please rent by this time, and you'll get this price type scenario. So. This is really big. Um, it's really big, especially if they have yield start to lock that price in. And, and so you'll see right here it has an expiration date. So you don't see that long of an of a, of a expiration. But, you know, it's usually one or two days there. 
but it gives them all of the information. They can put in upgrades here, apartment amenities, you know, floor plan images, maybe a map to the community, or even a, a map of the community could be placed in here as well. And so what Tracy was saying earlier is that they can use that quote because that's been emailed to them. Um, there's a link that they can go to the website and actually start the online leasing process from there as well. So that's, that's also great. Okay. Um, that's just me. That's just telling me, hey, I need you know, I need to schedule an automatic follow up. One last thing, if if they're going through a, a manual you know paper application, they of course can hit apply now or place them on a waiting list. And it takes them through the application process where they just enter in the information. So, you know, very intuitive. Everything that we do as far as kind of major steps or, or next steps is a wizard. So it takes them through a, you know, about a, I would say about a seven to ten step process of getting that application data in from, from a prospect to an applicant. From an applicant standpoint, we kind of saw this just a little bit ago, but these are all of my current applicants that I have. I also have a waiting list here. And this is where I could just click view, and, and we saw this a minute ago, but just one more look at it. This is now an applicant record. Uh, you'll always notice that the action menu are on the left-hand side, and there's tabs up at the top, contact information, so on and so forth. So this is where they would go ahead and move them in, change their date, maybe go ahead and offer them a rentable item. That's huge for us. Uh, we do track and store the rentable item. And not a lot of other softwares do that. And so what's great about that is most of the time when you're talking to a prospective client, they're keeping it in an Excel format, which is really not the case at all. It's a bunch of sticky notes in a binder. Um, and those sticky notes fall off. And you would re-rent those rentable items all the time to someone else to have people parked in there. This is keeping track of that, keeping track of the billing for them as well. Uh, lastly, here you have your residence tab, so this is housing all of your resident information. Um, <clears throat> when you're looking at resident, you'll notice as we go from prospect applicant to resident, this is also a big, big selling point for us, is that the, the page doesn't change. It's not a new page for them to see. The actions are always on the left. All the information is always in the same location. So for the, for the staff members at the property, it makes it very easy for them because they're not learning a new page from, from one status to the next. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's kind of the, the, the renter side of it. Um, while we're here, I thought we would go ahead and talk about uh, uh, the, the resident portal piece and our offering there as well. So, <clears throat> we have just recently actually, and then we'll, we'll finish up with, with, with leasing and rents in a minute, but I thought since we're kind of here, We'll, we'll, we'll work towards this first. We just finished um, in merging Welcome Home, what was formerly Welcome Home, and Active Building into one. So I'm actually logged in right now. There, there are two types of logins, and we'll talk about the renter login first. But I'm actually logged in as a renter right now. So the, the biggest difference between, or, or well, let me start here, I guess. For a resident portal, it's once again very self-serving. You, know, you think about yourself today. How many of you pay your bills online? How many of you who are renters pay your rent online? And if you don't, how many of you do you wish that you could? So that's really kind of where the resident portal started off as. There were two main tasks that every company out there wanted. They wanted them to be able to put in a service request, and they wanted them to be able to pay their rent online. So, but it's now morphed into so much more. Now they want to be able to see that they have uh, a package, uh, you know, and they want to be able to get notifications. They want to be able to, um, properties want to be able to communicate better with the actual renters themselves. So it, what we see here is, you know, active building along with the resident portal allow for mass texting, allow for mass emailing as far as how, how are we going to notify the property that we're about to restripe the property. Back in the day, you'd have to put notes on the door. Well, the problem with that was they would fly across the property and you'd have a bunch of paper flying across your property. So now it's much more electronic in how we are, are communicating with our renters. The last thing here is there was, there's been a, a very big uh, push towards how our renters want to communicate with each other. And it's much more of a social aspect within properties today. So, you know, we all know about Craigslist, right? And, and basically that's great. But there was, there was, the renters were asking for a Craigslist for that internal property or a way to communicate within that internal property. So 
so that's what we're seeing with our active buildings. So those are just kind of some of the highlights that, that our new resident portal, no longer called active buildings, we'll stop calling it that, our new resident portal is actually offering today. So with that being said, you'll notice over here on the left, they can send messages, so sending messages to their property. They can submit a service request. They can add a guest. This is great. So you know, think about if you have a dog or a cat, you're going out of town for the weekend, and you want to basically say, hey, my friend's coming over to you know, let my dog out or watch my dog or watch the cat or, or whatever the case is, what are my plans? They can add this guest information, feedback to the property management tool, and um, it, it's a way for them to do that without having to come into the office. Because you think about it, I mean, most, you know, most leasing staff offices today are open from 9 to 5, 9 to 6, which we're all working during those hours. So, so the industry had to figure out a way to be open 24-7, and they found that through the resident portal itself. They can reserve an amenity, so that's reserving maybe a cabana at the pool, maybe their movie room, maybe, they're, they're, maybe they have a party room. All of that can be done here as well. They can even make a payment online. Keep in mind, all of this information is real-time activity back into one site leasing and rent. So this is big for our clients. That we're, we're basically giving them a one-stop shop for all of our information. Um, they don't have to. The problem is, is when they use third parties, it's not, it's not, it, it's broken. It's an interface, right? So only some of the information will come in, not all the information. And it's not necessarily, necessarily a bi-directional feed. One, one, one piece of information may flow into one site, but it may not flow back into a third-party portal or whatever the case may be. With our resident portal and our online leasing, everything is bi-directional. Everything's flowing back and forth and in real time. So if I wanted to make a payment and I have, uh, you know, a charge, I just somebody just made a charge, that's going to show up in their actual portal just immediately a few seconds later. Issue parking pass. Now you'll see here, right, the community activity. This is just a, a way to think of it. In, you need to think of it a little bit like Pinterest and Craigslist because it's a lot of different information. So they can create groups that they like to be a part of, so, and then, of course, post that. But they can even sell items. Maybe they're selling a bicycle, or maybe they want to just post other information. They can see that information here as well. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the resident portal. I, I don't want to, there's a lot here I could show you. I could probably spend an hour here because it's just such a great offering that we offer today. But I just wanted to kind of give you a quick look look into it a little bit. Okay. So um, with that, kind of moving back into the, the, the leasing and rents piece of it all. And I'm going to show two different things here. So as far as how the work orders come in, there's two ways that they come in. They call the property, or they walk in the door and they hand the leasing, you know, they, they talk to a, a member of the property, you know, an office member of the property and they give them that information. But the other way is they're actually coming through the resident portal that we just saw as well. Now, as far as how those service requests are communicated to the maintenance staff, that's done a couple of ways as well. Um, they can be printed off kind of the old school way. But the other way that it can be handled is we offer mobile facilities. This can be done via the iPad or um, a mobile device, whether it be an Android or even a um, uh, an iPhone as well. Okay, okay give me just a second. My whole thing is not working. There we go. Okay, so this is an example of of our. I'm actually pulled up on my iPad right now, and I'm sharing my desktop top with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. Um, <clears throat> so these come in real time into the the mobile device. Like I said, iPhone, Android, or uh, the iPad, and they can see all of this information. So let's say I want to click into this very first one. There's a little bit of a lag, so give me give it just a second. But here we go. So this is giving me all the information for this particular work order. When they first walk into the unit, they're going to hit the start time here, okay? And it keeps track. This is huge. They love this. They're going to love this. It keeps track of how long they were in the actual unit um, while they were in there, okay? And so that's that's really kind of a, a big feature that we offer, and, they, and everybody goes ooh and all over that. But your maintenance staff is the one that's looking at all of this information. They can um, change the status of the work order here. They can, you know, push it to another person. Maybe, the, maybe it got assigned to me, but I'm not really the right maintenance person to be handling that. They can, they can push it over to somebody else. Um, and if you're, let's say, I'm a maintenance staff member, 
that is responsible for multiple properties, I can see multiple properties from my actual device as well. They can track parts used. Um, if they're using OPS or OPS technology and inventory, they can scan items in and out of their actual maintenance inventory. That is also a big, huge um, selling factor right now. A lot of our clientele are really wanting it to be able to manage their inventory. Why? Because um, they're seeing things being taken out of the maintenance shop, and so they want to be able to track that a little bit better. When they are done um, you know, with the time and stuff, they can go ahead and save their time and actually complete the actual work order from here. So they select the reason why they, or how they completed this particular. So let's say that we said we rehung loose down spout, and we go ahead and click OK there. And from there, we can go ahead and complete the work order, and then that automatically flows back into leasing and rent, showing that that work order has been completed. So I think this is a big mistake for our, our, our clientele right now um, in, in how they're doing that. And Emily, they can track parts used, it looks like, now as well. That's awesome. Yep. Not everyone does that, but many of our clients are starting to. Yep, absolutely. So, so kind of upcoming things when it comes to the mobile device is going to be GPS tracking. That's also a big, huge factor. They want to know where they are. Um, some people have some maintenance staff members. I know I had one that used to go play golf every day. So we want to know where they are playing golf at. <laughs> um, some other factors that are kind of coming down the pike is the Make Ready Board as far as being available on the mobile device as well. On the students, that's actually already the case. It's going to be coming out very soon. Um, we're going to be putting the Make Ready Board, however, on the, on the mobile device for conventional as well. So this is the Make Ready Board. What a Make Ready Board is when somebody moves out, or is given notice, this unit gets put on the make-ready board, and how it's handled without an electronic make-ready board is usually done with a big white board and markers, and it gets erased, and uh, you forget to put a unit on there. This is all done electronically. The units get automatically pushed to the, to the make-ready board and tracked through make, the make-ready board. So that's, that's really big for them to be able to uh, see this information in a single location, one, and everybody has visibility into it. And then secondly, it, it's uh, it's keeping track of those work orders for them. So, because it's creating a work order for each unit, for each each column that you see here, and it's keeping track of the time that, that, our, that their maintenance staff is, is, is doing that. As you can see, you can put comments directly into the Make Ready Board, real simple, just double click into there, type in a comment. They can even put in a schedule, um, say that, you know, maybe they're gonna do this tomorrow, they can go ahead and do that as well. Um, and so it just keeps all that information in a single location. This can be exported into Excel as well. Um, so that's kind of the make ready board. Assets, so assets are, are basically, you know, the refrigerators, or stoves, or microwaves. They're keeping track of this, and, and we give them this tool, and this is also really a big uh, feature of our, of our system, I think. Because the problem is, is that, you know, you basically just buy a new refrigerator, and it, it does happen. You know, the ice maker breaks in two months into just buying it. Well, that, that ice maker and that refrigerator is still under warranty. And so without this asset tracking tool, it, they're tracking it manually in, in an Excel spreadsheet. And the maintenance staff is supposed to look at that Excel spreadsheet when they get that work order. But we all know that they're busy and they don't. So this, by putting all their assets in here, they click in a, they create a work order for that refrigerator. It's telling that maintenance staff member in big, bold letters, hey, you, this, this particular item is, is an asset and it's under warranty. So they're, they're, that, it's automatically communicating that information for them. A consumption log, just real quickly. Some states require that they, they keep track of how much Freon, paint, pool chemicals that they utilize. So this is what this is doing for them. And it's an automatic reaction. It's, it's set up by work order. So if they say they charge the Freon in a refrigerator, it's going to automatically ask them to tell the system how much Freon did they use, how many ounces did they use. Okay. Uh, purchasing. So this is where they go in and they key in their purchase orders, invoices, credit memos. Now, this is really good. So basically there's kind of, I guess let me back up. We have two different offerings here. We have one-site purchasing. Okay and or we have ops technology. Now I'm actually going to change properties for just a moment because I want to show some really neat integrations that we have. But <clears throat> so they basically have two different types of channels that they can 
enter in their invoices and create purchase orders. And, and it just depends on the clientele of what they want. So purchasing, let's talk about that one first. Purchasing is kind of more of a basic, um, but very well used. And the majority of our clients actually use purchasing. But they can come in here and create a purchase order. So basically they're saying, creating a purchase order, I'm about to purchase this particular item, and I need to get approval for that. That's why they use purchase orders. It's all done electronically. You see here I have some that are pending, that are pending approval, and I have some that have already been opened, okay? which means they've already been approved essentially. But it, it's just a way to say I need to order three faucets, two microwaves, and a few filters, and it requires an approval process within the system. The second thing is, is from there they can create invoices, right? Now, with the purchase orders, they're using purchase orders, they can create the purchase the, the invoice. Excuse me. They can create the invoice off the purchase order. That makes the data entry very easy for the site staff because it was already done during the purchase order process. But they can they can basically key in this invoice information. They can, along with doc management, also scan in the images of those invoices as well. So we see a lot of invoices here that have images. And what that translates to is once we are in one site accounting and we're actually selecting to pay to pay a bill they can see all the information that the site entered in back to the purchase order and even back to the actual image of the actual invoice as well. So that's huge. Um, and along with one site accounting, this is, a, this is a big piece because a lot of times a vendor will come to a site staff member and say, I haven't been paid on this bill. I'm not going to do this next set of work for you until I know that I've been paid. Well, what, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a community manager would have to do is pick up the phone, call an accountant, hope that they pick up, and then that accountant would have to research if or not, you know, whether or not they've actually cut a check. Well, here, because our integration is so tight with our back-end accounting platform, they can actually look that up themselves. They can see that they paid Maintenance Warehouse on this date with this check number, and it was for this amount. They are able to see that information. So I can say to that vendor, it's in the mail. We just paid it yesterday or whatever the case may be. Now, um, the other big push that we see today, and it's another big, um, very, as far as, our, as far as our clientele go, um, they're protecting themselves more and more. So we're seeing a lot more, like we talked about earlier, renter's insurance, right? But they're also protecting themselves on the back end as well from a vendor perspective. So we have vendors that come out and, you know, we want to make sure that they have you know, the proper documentation as far as the proper insurance, the proper, excuse me, W-9 form information, all of that. Is, and, and so how that was handled before Compliance Depot was it was handled manually. So they would have to, the properties would have to go to their vendor file, research it, try to find, see if they have the correct W-9 and do they have the correct insurance documents. And let's be real, you get busy and you wouldn't do that, you would just go ahead and hand the key to the vendor. The vendor at that point went out and they did something bad, either to a renter or they burned down the building, and now that property is not covered. So with Compliance Depot, there's there's a very big um, integration with Compliance Depot with purchasing and with ops that they can see all of that information directly within the vendor file. But they don't even have to look it up. When they go in, they create that purchase order or that invoice, it's going to tell them this vendor is not compliant with that, you know, with, with the company. So there's not a web, another website that they have to go to. It's nothing else that they have to go and pull and find that information. It's embedded with our actual platform that we, we provide our clients as well. So another huge offering, and, and Compliance Depot is actually free to our clients. We, we charge it to back to the, to the, the vendor itself. So that, that's also another big value-add service as well. Okay? Um, budgeting. I think I'm going to come back to budgeting. Let's move on to docs. Okay, this is just document management. So this is housing all of the documents for this particular property. So this could be uh, their lease file. It could be remember we're doing online leasing with e-signature. It could be that. It could be their uh, scanned-in images of invoices. It could even be pictures of a final account statement. So the resident moves out, do a lot of damage. They want to they want to you know, send a bill to them with all their pictures and everything else. Well, all of that information is housed here under the document management tab and even under the correct location. So if it's an invoice, it's under the invoice section. 
if it's a picture for move out, it's under the resident move out section. It's all housed in both locations. It's very easy for them to find. But there's other things that they can house here as well. It could be vendor information. It could be pictures of the property that they're kind of maybe looking at doing capital improvements for, floor plan, legal description, all of that stuff. Okay. Reports, pretty self-explanatory here. <laughs> this is where they find all the reports. We have about 800 stock reports sitting out there for them. Now, these are the property level reports right here. Uh, they can be scheduled. They can be scheduled uh, to, to generate on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis. Uh, but this is typically what we see at the property level. In a moment, we'll take a look at more of the company level, what they see. Payments. So <clears throat> payments is very big today. And, and there's four different channels that the payments can come in. We talked about one of them already, and that was through the resident portal. Right? They pay online. That automatically flows back into the resident ledger. The other types of channels that, they prov that we provide is a check scanning channel. So they can scan. Um, they have a scanner at their desk. They basically have, let's say, 50 checks, and they come in here and they click new, right? They tell one site how many checks, so we're going to put in 50, and it's totaling $40,000 there. They stick those in the scanner, and they hit start scanning, and start scanning those checks. The very first time that they use those, they, they scan a check or use the scanner, they have to associate that check to that resident. But then going forward, this is so amazing. They never have to do that again unless it's a new resident. They, the, the scanner automatically reads the check and knows exactly what resident needs to go to, and it reads the amount on the check, so it automatically even knows what amount to post. So think about this. If you think about what they had to do in the past, they would have to post this type of manually, right? It took a lot of time. I mean, we say, it's, we say that we, we can save them 16 hours in just the first five business days of the week by just going to a scanner. And that's a lot of time. I mean, 16 hours, think about how much you could do in 16 hours. So those are studies that we've done. It takes a long time to post this money uh, manually, you know, take copies of the checks and drive to the bank. It's not. All they have to do is scan the check. It automatically posts to the ledger. It automatically goes to their bank. All of that's being handled for them very easily right there. Now, the other two types of channels are what we call TELIDR. And so the reason why we started offering this is because credit cards, residents want to pay by credit card for multiple reasons. They get benefits from their credit card company. You know, the, we all have points on our credit card. They get benefits to that. But the problem is, is that the, 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 the laws that, you know, if we charge a percentage, um, you know, it's called a transaction fee, we, we charge a percentage of the cost of the rent. So let's say that it may be 2%. Okay, American Express is like 2% or something like that. Well, 2% of $1,000, that's a lot of money. Um, and so the companies were having to eat that because there are only so much you can charge back to the resident from a convenience perspective. So that fee has to be, you know, what we call fixed, fair, and flat. It cannot be a percentage. So we can't charge back the 2% to the resident. We have to do a flat fee. So with that being said, we wanted to give them another offering because what we've seen is the majority of our companies are saying, we're not accepting credit cards for rent via the resident portal because it was too much of a cost to, the, to, the, to our, our property management company. So they're only accepting ACH transactions via the resident portal. So we offered TELIBR so they could charge a higher convenience fee and recoup those costs and still allow that offering for your, the renters to pay, on, you know, to pay via the phone via your credit card. So that's TELIBR. The last one is e-money order. Um, this is one of the biggest ones out there, and, and it's, this, this, this almost sells payments for me every time. And you think about e-money order, there are a lot, every property out there accepts money orders. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's very tough, because you have to accept them, right? But the problem is, is that there's a lot of, of room for fraud with, e -money, with, with money orders. And the reason is, is so I can't tell you how many times a resident would say to me, I lost my money orders or you lost my many orders, we can track it. Um, or they would say, my favorite was I had a manager that, that sold $30,000 worth of money orders because she wrote her name in the pay-to field. She would tell the renters, don't enter the pay-to field, I'll stamp that in for you, but she would write her own name in it. So we wanted to take the, e, the money orders away from the sites altogether so they didn't have to process them. So that's how we came up with the money order. And what happens is, so 
the resident still goes to the merchant, hands the merchant the money. So let's say Walmart in this case, because it's one of our biggest vendors out there. They hand Walmart the money. Walmart keys in some information into a system, and they are basically posting that money into a system that automatically feeds back into one site leasing and rents for them. Okay? Remember, all payments channels are real time. So no matter whether you're doing tele-IVR, resident portal, check scanning, or e-money order, it's all real time back into the resident portal. So the, the resident never has to bring the money order back to the site. The merchant's actually keying that information in. All of these channels, though, do what we call real-time validation. This is big for our clients. So if they're in eviction status or some other form of status, uh, all of those channels will not accept those payments. So that's big. That there's, there, you know, if the e-money order, if the merchant, if Walmart sees that they can't accept the payment from this renter, Walmart's going to say, I'm sorry, you need to go talk to the leasing office. We can't accept your payment today. Or on the resident portal, it would just not accept that payment. You need to go talk to the leasing office. That's really big for, for, from a payment perspective. Um, all right. So payments. Concierge um, goes along with our resident portal. So with concierge, this is where they go in and put in package information, right? So FedEx showed up with 20 packages. The, sta the staff will, would put in those package information here via concierge. And then that feeds into, would send an automatic notice to the resident and put that in their resident portal as well. And this is also a place to kind of log keys, guest keys. So maybe you have a maid service that comes in every Friday. Before, you would have to write that information out on a piece of paper for your property. Now it's all done electronically via the resident portal, which means it's on the here as well. And Emily, correct me if I'm wrong, it's my understanding that if you have more recent information than I do, that that with the merger of the Welcome Home resident portal and active building, that we're really supporting concierge for clients that are using it, but not necessarily marketing it since most of that functionality now exists within the new, um, the new resident portal. Yeah, so I just want to make sure people were aware of that. Mm -hmm. But no, I, um, I can open it up for uh, some brief questions before you move on to the next segment, uh, just to make sure we're on track. If anyone has any specific questions about what you've gone through so far, you can either raise your hand or, or type them into the chat. I can unmute you if you want to speak or feel free to type your message. I hear someone typing. This is Jessica. That's Tracy. That's exactly what I was going to ask, how that was going to uh, work with the integration of active building. So, oh, okay. Great, Good. Great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Jessica. Yeah, so we, we're not going to discontinue Welcome Home or the older Crossfire resident portal in, until we can port everyone over, convert everyone over, upgrade them to the new environments. Uh, and I know that Kimberly Lang and her team are working on those plans uh, probably as we speak. So uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks and months. All right. But, sorry, uh, but to confirm, if they did have uh, the new resident portal, then if they wanted to manage things, they wouldn't do it here. They would switch over to a different system. That's, that's correct. They would manage that out of what we're referring to as active building or the new resident portal. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, there's that. So, so what I didn't show you yet is, so this is, real quick, I'm now in as, so if you want to know what I look like, I look like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, this is, so on one, you'll notice it, it, it looks the same as the, re the resident portal, right? But this is, I'm logged in as an employee right now. So I have, a, I have more information, right? I have this whole dashboard section that talks about staff information and all of that. So I would key in or, or actually a scan. I believe they scan a little, get a little barcodes. Like Walmart, mm -hmm. Yeah, Walmart barcode scanner thing. Um, they actually scan that into the system and in, into the new resident portal. And then there's also a lobby dis display screen that's integrated with the new resident portal or active building. And it has all of the features and functions that the, the one-site concierge product does, does today. 
but if a client's already using concierge or using the Crossfire portal or the older Welcome Home portal, they can still order it if they take on an add-on site. We let them order those products. We're just not selling them to new clients. Any other questions? Are you going to hit on um, velocity a little bit too, Emily? Yep, absolutely. Okay, good. Okay. Before we went on to kind of like that side, I thought I would make sure. Yeah. Okay. So we will move along. All right. So. Um, I guess let's talk about velocity first, and then and then we'll head on budgeting, and then we'll kind of go into ops and 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 um, and then into accounting from there. If that's if that's tricky. Yeah, that sounds great, Em. All right. So velocity. Um, so what velocity is is first of all, uh, our companies out there um, have started. This is not new, I would say probably about 10 or 15 years ago, started charging back utilities, water, sewer, trash, maybe there's gas on the property, back to the actual residents themselves because this is one of their their biggest expenses on their income statement and, and their biggest expense period is their utility charges out there. So now there are two types or, or two ways to charge back a resident. One is that each each uh, apartment has a meter on it, just like if you live in a home, you have a meter. Um, but the other way is what we call uh, rub, and that's where it typically it's an older property where they may only have one meter for the entire property. And so they do a calculation, and we help them come up with the best calculation for them. And basically, they they charge back these bills, the, you know, the, the water, sewer, gas, and trash, uh, back to the actual resident and themselves. Now, where we come into play here is we do a couple of different things. Um, first of all, we create, basically we get through all the water bill, right? And we create, we will either read the meters for them, or we'll create the calculation. Regardless though, um, as soon as we get that done, we, we give the properties what's called a pre-bill. We give them a shot to take a look at what we are about to charge the residents before we charge them. So our goal is to get this out to them about the 15th of the month. Okay, so they review this. Now this particular property has what we call a convergent bill on it as well. So there's two types of bills that we send out to the resident itself. We have a convergent bill, which is an all-in-one bill, where we have, we basically pull what's left in the ledger from last month and what's in scheduled billing, and we add the water or sewer and gas and trash charges on top of that. Or we just do a single utility bill where there are no resident fees, you know, no resident charges in there. So nothing from the resident uh, scheduled billing and nothing from the ledger in there. It's just what what's the water bill for this month or what's the, what's the water, sewer, and gas trash for this month. So majority of our clients, though, I would say use our convergent bill. Uh, we, you know, I, I, they see the value in it because there is a 5% increase in collections with a conversion bill over just a single utility bill because it's easier for the renters to say, I just need to write one check today or I just need to go online one time and pay versus whenever they feel like the water bill they need to, if it's just a single utility bill, they feel like they need to write two checks or they feel like they need to uh, you know, pay twice for whatever reason, which is more processing for, for, the, for, them, for the property in the long run. So this is a pre bill. Just quickly, they review it. They make sure the charges are correct. They look at all this information. And, and then basically click next, click next, and approve that information. Once they approve that pre-bill, it's back to us. Our goal is to have that pre-bill back by the 20th of the month. Um, the very next day, we generate and create uh, the, the actual convergent bill or the single utility bill, and we mail those out. Our goal is to have those water bills out to the resident by the 25th of the month. The second thing that we do is we then, after we send out those, we also import the water charges automatically into the resident ledgers. So the staff has nothing to do other than to, net, to do the pre-bill itself. Okay, so that's, that's big as well. So that's the water side of it. You also have vacant cost recovery. So vacant cost recovery is a resident moves in and they, so let's say they move, they move in on the 15th of the month, 
but for whatever reason, they, you know, they didn't turn their electric on until the 20th of the month. Well, because of how the apartment industry is, we always leave the lights on after you move out, right? Uh, so that we can do the make ready process and everything there. So it, until the renter goes and calls TXU or whatever and says, I want this in my name, that, that electric is still on. But the company, the, the, the property management company is going to say, I'm not paying for those five days if you live in that community that you should have turned the electricity on in your name. So that's vacant cost recovery. It works on the move in and the move out, even on a move out or even a mid, mid lease term. We're always looking at, did that electricity ever get put back into the property's name? And if so, we're going to start charging that resident back for those days that it was in the property's name when it should have been in the resident's name. But on top of that, they even charge a fee for that. So in the state of Texas here, we charge 50 bucks for each occurrence. So it's some ancillary income for the property. So the, the caveat, or, or what's, so, what's so beneficial about this is that RealPage Velocity is, is managing all of this for them. Because here's the reality, I used to have to do this and it, it was not fun you would get a stack of bills that was five inches long for your property. And you would have to open each one of them, figure out which was a vacant unit, which was a vacant unit that a resident moved into. You have to manually calculate all this information out. Well, guess what? That's taken that time that that property person is having to do that. I mean, that would, that would take me two days to do one property. And so just taking that time away from that person that's having to do that, getting them back to what we hired them for, which is good customer service, resident experiences, and that's being handled and managed for them in the background. So the difference between us and our competitors out here from a vacant cost recovery standpoint is that we look at this on a daily basis. Uh, most of our competitors out there only look at it on a monthly basis. And so that's really big when it comes to that. So if they come in here, they approve it, uh, they can, you know, and we automatically send out the bill with all the information, we automatically push the charges to the resident ledger as well. Um, we also do the utility invoice processing. So there's, there's two parts, or three parts to this actually. What that means is all the bills essentially come to RealPage. Okay? And we are processing those bills, and we're putting that information into Velocity here so we can do vacant cost recovery. We can do the, the, the utility charges, the, the water, sewer, and trash charges, right? the utility bill back to the resident. But all of those bills, all the utility bills are coming through us, and we're managing that. Now, there's benefits to that. Um, one, site staff doesn't have to worry about, you know, entering that bill into some, you know, into some system and, and trying to, and then accounting, you know, all, and then pushing into accounting. Because you think about just on, a, just on the electric alone, like I said, you'd have a stack of 500 bills. So that would be nothing. And so that would take a long time to process all this. So all the bills come to here. And in 1.35 days, we process those bills and have that bill into Velocity here so they can review them, see that information. But the biggest benefit is, is that that information, the bill, and the information scan and image of the bill all push into one set of counting, if they have one set of counting. If they don't, we can still push into third-party systems as well. But in one set of counting, it automatically pushes. There's no data entry point for anyone from the staff member perspective. The second benefit, I think, it, which is now the most important benefit is our companies out there are looking at their carbon footprint. They're looking at their energy use, and they're looking for gaps. Um, I had once a pool leak, and it took us four months to find it. We the only reason why we ended up finding it was like one month. You know, our water bill increased by, you know, fifty bucks. So we're like, well, that could be a bunch of different things. The next month it jumped to two hundred dollars. The next month it jumped three hundred dollars. And by the fourth month, we found the leak itself because you could see it, right? It got so big in the pool, we could see it. But imagine the money we would have saved had we found it sooner, right? So that the, the energy management reporting and the energy management services that we're, we're providing out there are really big. And, and so that's just kind of all of the pieces of velocity, if you will. And it's all, once again, embedded into leasing and rent. So you'll notice the user interface is, is very easy for them to use. They're used to using that piece. Um, and then the last kind of big thing is from a move out perspective. So a resident moves out, and they still owe their final water bill, right? This is very hard to capture in third party, the third party providers, because they can't always capture the right amount. 
or based off the right move out or move out date, right? So because this is embedded within leasing and rents, it's looking at the resident record daily. It's knowing and seeing that information. So when they click move out, it's creating that final bill, pushing the charges into the ledger, pushing it into the final account statement. There's no manual process for the site staff where it would be with a third party provider. If they undo a move out, no problem. It undoes all the charges. It undoes everything. So it's like it never even happened. That can't happen with third party providers also. So those are some things for you to think about. Any questions on velocity? Um, you said that it pushes the charges into the resident ledger. Does that mean also then that the resident can pay that via the portal? Yes, they can. Um, and though also, it's not there yet, um, and I'm, in fact, I need to follow up on this. Um, with, the, with the new resident portal, uh, they're going to be able to see their actual bill. So they can opt in, instead of receiving those bills via a mail system, they can opt in to see that information via the resident portal as well. Thanks. OK. Any other questions? <coughs> Alrighty. So with that being said, um, I'm going to jump into Central, Real Page Central for just a quick moment. A couple things I want to show you here. Um, so we, we talked a brief second about the reports, right? Um, but there are the, the reporting platform that we provide, you know, obviously we, we provide 800 stock reports at the property level for them to, to, to view and see and all of that. We also provide them with central reporting. And what central reporting is, is the company level reporting that they used to do manually um, with Excel. So they'd have to, basically, the properties would email the corporate office and someone would spend two days in the corporate office generating a report like this just so that every all the higher level executives could see that information. So this is something that we also provide to them. So this is a This is actually a stock report. But in the central reporting platform, they can create custom reports, custom calculations, um, and all of that's there for them. They can export the data into Excel so if they still want to, you know, some companies love Excel, right, and they want to be able to create pivot tables and things of that nature in Excel. They can export that information into Excel as well. So um, they love this tool. You know, it's, it, it's real easy for them to utilize, and, and it's great for them. Um, it's great from a perspective of you can chart information very easily. Uh, so if I want to chart occupancy units, or let's say I want to do occupancy percentage, take just a second to load here. Okay, I want to do let's do occupied percentage. And they don't ever just look at one property, right? So this is looking at how has my occupancy been over the last few months. But they look at multiple properties. So they can add a few additional properties and within moments they can create charts and graphs. So this is very easy for them to use, very easy to get and gather this information. Any questions there? And they can change it into bar graphs and things there. Okay. Now budgeting. All right, so budgeting is actually one of my favorite products that we offer right now um, because I used to hate budgeting. So, so the way that our companies do budgeting um, without our tool is they do it via Excel, okay? And here's what happens. They, around August, they'll get all the properties in, into a big room and you're stuck there for three weeks. And you start keying in last year's data, okay? Last year's, how many, you know, last year's uh, expenses that you had, last year's, um, you know, income, basically you key in all this information and it takes you days. Like I said, you'd be locked in a room just keying in this information over and over and over and over again. And so with our budgeting tool, and it, so what we saw with that, what you would see is the budgeting season would start about August, right? Well, it would go through um, till the end of December. And the reason is because it goes through an approval process. So the sites enter their information, then accounting enters in their information, then the regionals look at it, then it goes to this next person and this next person and this next person until pretty much everybody under the sun has seen it. Okay? 
And so with our budgeting tool, we, we have found that we can take their budgeting season from three to six months down to two to three weeks. And the reason why we can do that is because we automatically bring the information in from one site leasing and rent and one site accounting. So they don't have to manually key in last year's data. That's huge. So what they're really looking at in the, the next two to three weeks, okay, and we're saying start to finish, is really creating the budget for the next year, right, and going through the approval process. Because the approval process and the workflow is still going to happen. So the, the site staff are going to still do a portion of it. Regional managers are going to do a portion of it. Accounting is going to do a portion of it. But it, it takes them, it, they're, all they're having to worry about is now the 2015 budget, right? So in budgeting here, so this is a dashboard for budgeting. Okay, it just shows a bunch of information. They can create to-do lists for the site staff members. It shows on their Today page. Um, the comments are all listed there, frequently view reports. They can even manage their contracts. I love this here. So they'll create a contract for pest control, and that contract may expire in, in September. Well, they can manage and see those contracts in here as well. So just to, I don't want to jump too dive or, or get too deep into budgeting, but I do want you to kind of see the tool itself. So we're, we're looking at one particular property's budget. This property's budget is this, this home screen and houses all the comments that have ever happened for this particular budget. You see who and when they did that. Um, you also, it keeps track of you know, any edits that they made, who and when and they did that as well. But the one thing I want to show you just quickly, and like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend too much time in here. The one thing I want to show you right here is, so I'm, I'm looking at a 2013, I'm basically creating my 2013 budget in this case, okay? But notice how it automatically brought in my 2012 information and my 2012 forecast that I created. That was an automatic reaction. There was nothing I had to do. I had to push a button to make that happen. Um, it makes that very easy. Like, like I said, that information could have, you know, 100 GL accounts that you would have to key that information in manually, plus everything else. That's automatically bringing that information in for prior year actually. A couple other things. Calculators are already built with when you were using Excel. I can't tell you how many times your your uh, your calculation would be deleted, and so that'd be very frustrating. So, so it even keeps those in there as well. Okay. Any questions on budgeting? Okay. Uh, so Vicky, you have a question. Says, can this be used with other leasing and rent software? Are you meaning different flavors, such as commercial, student, affordable? affordable? No, actually, I was asking about other software like Yardi or PSI or something like that. With what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With Yardi or other software? Good. Yeah. Agree. So right now, we're actually we've got one client testing out the the Yardi integration with the budget where it's going to auto-pull Yardi information. Um, but for like MRI and even other clients of Yardi's or um, they're using other, other, you know, J.D. Edwards or anything else out there, they can import that information with the CSV tool. So just Excel, basically. Okay. Did that answer your question? Any other questions there? Any other questions there? Alrighty. Um, so let's jump into ops real quick, just to show you a few things regarding ops technology. Okay, so we talked about purchasing earlier, right? They, in, in one site, we have purchasing, and they create a purchase order. Um, the problem with purchasing, right, there's still a problem with purchasing. And, and most of the time, clients, you know, or the staff, what they'll do is they'll go ahead and order the item, then they create the purchase order, right? Well, so it's not stopping the spending before it's actually happening. So with ops technology, it's a full online procurement system. So when they create a purchase order, it hits an approval process. As soon as it's approved, it talks to the vendor, right? Um, the vendor then at that point fulfills the purchase order and the vendor keys in the invoice. 
the idea with, with ops is that there would never be another invoice that hits the property again because the vendor came the invoices into ops technology. When that vendor keys that information in, the invoice goes back to the property. The property says, yep, I received this information. Then it hits an approval process, and then it goes into um, one site accounting or YARDI or MRI. So it brings in the information as well as the image of the, the invoice as well. So everything is done electronically. As far as ops technology goes, it's very much like an online shopping experience for the site staff member. And they can order multiple items. So let's think about a make ready for, for a second. In a make ready, I want to do carpet, I want to do paint, I need, some, I need to order a faucet, and I also need to maybe order some paper from the front office. If they were doing that without ops technology, they would have to call possibly or get online to four different vendors. So the problem is the maintenance staff is sitting in the office for the good majority of the day, the maintenance manager, trying to gather and get all the information that he needs just to work that afternoon or work for tomorrow. So, uh, all right. Can you all hear me still? Tracy, can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, I was right, on so, mute. Yes, we um, can hear you. When? <laughs> okay. um, so with this, it's very much like a, like I said, a very much like a Amazon.com shopping experience for them. If they want to go in and they want to order, let's say flooring, let's do just a quick, we'll do one quick shopping. Shopping is fun, right? They want to order flooring. First of all, this is this company's parts and pieces. Okay, that they determine what carpet, what refrigerators are being seen by the property. They can see images of that information. So we're going to go ahead and add this particular carpet. If I add the unit information, okay, as soon as I start typing the unit information in, it knows the unit square footage, carpet size that is needed, everything. Okay? They say that we need this carpet, I want pad, and I need carpet installation as well. So they select a few items, and they give me a few times, they tell the vendor a few times that they want this to happen. So let's say either tomorrow or Friday is good, and that's all I have to do. It, it, without ops technology, you would have to go and look this information up. And this was just, I mean, you would have a big binder with all of the apartments in there and how big the square footage is and how much carpet you would need for each unit or each floor plan type. So this makes it simple because it's already in there for them. So they go ahead and add that to cart. And as you can see down here, here's my shopping cart. It will automatically or can automatically assign this to GL code so that it takes the guessing work out as well. So they don't have to, you know, no, the maintenance guys don't need to know what GL account something needs to be assigned to. It just is automatically doing that for them. If we were to go back to kind of our shopping experience, um, usually I order a couple of things. Maybe I also want to order a refrigerator or something um, just to show you how simple it is. Let's do a refrigerator, and it will bring up my list of refrigerators, okay? Uh, and we'll go ahead and add that one. All right, so I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and proceed to check out here. Okay, so here are all of my items. Okay, you'll see that we assigned it a unit for this particular one. So I'll go ahead and assign this to the same unit. I can assign a project. So they may want to track project information, like we may be doing a rehab, and they want to track how much money they're spending in that particular rehab. Um, we talked about the GL code information here as well, so they can start, you know, keying in that information. I'll just go ahead and put it to something. Okay. Uh, they can split it between properties if they want to. So maybe they have two properties that are sharing costs, or, or maybe it's a phase one, phase two type scenario. They can check against the budget and see that information and see do they have the money to spend. And if, and if not, maybe they won't order that refrigerator right now. Uh, both purchasing and ops really does teach the properties to spend smarter. So it's the last day of the month and try to order pens and paper. But then they see they don't have any money, they're going to wait until the next day. So this is that's really great from a from a financial perspective. Okay. Um, if they're done, they can go ahead and continue to check out. Uh, what that does is create that electronic purchase order. At this point, it's going to seek approval. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to seek approval to whoever their approvers are. It could be someone in the corporate office. They can approve these either through a computer or through a mobile device as well. But these are electronic purchase orders and what they look like. It does create one for each vendor. 
so you can just kind of see that. Okay. Um, if I go back to my home screen here, and this is really all I want to show, this is just kind of my home screen. It's my dashboard for ops, if you will. It tells me how many pending orders I have, pending approvals. Um, so a lot of times this is where you're working from, to, if you're an approver, just to see what do you have out there that needs to be approved. Or if I'm a maintenance staff member and I need to see um, my receipt of goods, so I need to accept you know, that, yes, I did receive 20 filters today. I would, I would use that from this today page or from this home page, if you will. Okay. Invoices, like I said, those are automatically coming back in. It's just an approval at that process, at that point. Okay. Any questions on ops technology? All right, there's one. Let me find it. Can I, nope, nope, already emptied that one. Curious to know. So, uh, curious to know how ops decides on vendors. Can a client request that a certain vendor be included? Well, so the vendors. What well, depends? Um, so vendors are if they're using one side accounting. Accounting vendors are added in one side accounting and pushed down into, into either ops or into purchasing. Typically, the accountant is the one who's adding the vendor. Okay, um, if they have Compliance Depot, Compliance Depot is also integrated with uh, uh, with with Ops Technology as well, and um, you know they basically add the, the the vendor in in one side accounting. It pushes to Compliance Depot, and then it pushes back once it's approved. Does that answer your question? Perfect. All right, so we're kind of moving to one site accounting now. So this is the back end. Everything has been done. So we talked a lot about integration. And, and the integration, I think, with one site accounting is just amazing. And, and it's very fun to demo um, a full solution deal with our clients, and especially when you show them accounting. And you show them how easy all the information is flowing into one site accounting. They love it. And um, they, just, they are just amazed at how easy it is for them to be able to process the back-end accounting functions, and then how easy it is for them to get the financial reporting that they're looking for. So when they first log into OneSite Accounting, what they see here is their, their, operate, their dashboard. The dashboard can be created. Um, everybody can have a completely different dashboard. Basically, it's just kind of a graphical representation of your financials, the best way to describe that. So you see here very easily, these are all my cash balances. Um, I can see graphs as far as you know, NOI, actual versus budget. When I hover over the numbers, it's giving me the detail behind that information. Um, so I can do bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts. Um, again, it's letting you know. If I want to see the actual report behind it, I just simply click view here. shows me that report. Fee managers love this dashboard. And the reason why fee managers love this dashboard is a lot of times they'll give an owner access to this dashboard with a read-only type scenario. And so they can just instead of mailing or emailing the reports to them, the financial reports at the, at the end of the month, they'll say, here's your login to our accounting assistant. Here's the dashboard. I want you to see with all your financial reports. Owners love it, and, uh, and fee managers love it. Now, the, the newest kind of thing that we're actually going to start providing for those fee managers to give to an owners is an owner portal for the owner to log in. So instead of giving them you know, access to the dashboard, they're going to actually post all the reports to the client, to the owner portal. Um, so that's the next kind of big thing, and, and, and so far, fee managers seem to be very excited about that. From a reporting standpoint, um, so first and foremost, while I'm waiting for this to load, I'm looking at this from a company level, right? So I'm looking at all my assets in, in a single location. Um, however, I can drill down into an individual asset or property from here as I, if I wanted to. If I did this, it would open up a brand new window. So you'll notice up here at the top, I, I still have my company open, but now I can also just see an individual property or asset as well. Um, from a reporting standpoint, up here at the top, these are called applications. And each application has their stock reports that they give. So check register, cash, or you know, a bank, uh, excuse me, a vendor aging, you know, uh, all of that information, those are stock, what we consider a stock report. The financials, however, are, are customized to each client. So as a part of the implementation process, we ask them for a set of their financials, and, and we help build those financials 
along with them, and we also teach them how to build their own financials. Um, we make that very apparent to them whenever we're talking to them because we we don't we're not a consulting company, right? We we are a software company, so we want to make sure that our our clients know how to build their own financial statements and, and, and custom reports as they want to. We built them a very easy report writer to, to in, in teach them this report writer, but it's a very intuitive, very easy report writer for them to utilize. So this is kind of just a quick gander at, at what the report writer looks like. Um, very easy for them to add information into a report, um, create calculations, things of that nature. They can do that very easily. Okay, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. Um, as far as the reports itself, uh, we give it to them in, in multi multiple formats. Um, and when we show them this next thing, so this is kind of one of my favorite things to show, because when we show this um, integration here in the drill back functionality, they, the clients just love it. So they have to select a few things here just to, to see a report, but it's not like they have to reinvent the wheel every time. So I'm just going to select my what I'm looking for. So I'm going to say my Texas properties. And we'll look at it as of today. Give it just a second to load. So here's an income statement. Now, this is where we get them every time. They love this piece. So let's say that they have a question regarding late fees here. Seems a little high, seems a little low, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> they can start drilling back from the actual report down into the detail of what these late fees are. So as we see this, Okay, I'm going to start drilling back and show you guys this. You can see, we're going to see the actual detail. We're going to see what residents make up this line item of $500. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing, this looks a little bit like one site leasing and rent, because this is the journal summary that came over from leasing and rent. When I click view here, this is going to first show me all the residents that make this $500 line item up. Okay. Keep in mind, I am in a report. I did not have to log back into leasing and rent. I didn't have to go anywhere else. I'm in a report and I'm able to drill back into this. So let's take it a step further. I can drill all the way back into a resident record from a report as well. So this is big. Accountants um, would call me all the time and say, I need to see so-and-so's ledger. So I'd have to stop what I was doing and fax this information to them. Um, because we didn't get, you know, we didn't give them access to the property management tool. But this, they, didn't, they would need to do that. They can actually see all of this information from an actual income statement or report. This is huge. Okay. <clears throat> Assess reports. Um, under cash management, um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to kind of breeze through this. If anybody needs some further details, let me know. But the main things under cash management here are, uh, this is where they manage their, their checking and savings account. But it's also where they do their bank reconciliation differentiators here is that they can upload their bank reconciliation from a from their actual bank website and they can set it to auto match with review and it will auto match the auto match the line items for them so it'll automatically check those line items off so it saves them a ton of time imagine if you have 50 bank accounts and you had to reconcile those individually and manually and auto check those and manually check that information off it, it, this you, when you show a client this, <clears throat> they are just amazed at, at you know, how much time this is going to save them. Accounts payable. Um, this is just where they do their bill pay process. So the first, they could enter a bill directly into one site accounting. Um, but when they come in here to select a pay, I will show you guys this right quick. These are all the bills that have come in, no matter from which location. So if they're using purchasing, they automatically flow into here. If they're using ops they automatically flow into here. The velocity bills automatically flow into here as well. And they can drill back into this. So here's a velocity bill, just to kind of quickly show you here. Uh, they can drill back into this and, and see the detail information and the actual image of the bill itself from here as well. So see right here, we see this velocity image. That would go for if they scan in a bill through purchasing or the electronic image of the uh, invoice from off. They would be able to see just like, there's, just like what you're seeing right now on your screen. This is huge um, that they're able to see that. Okay, um, so just kind of last minute things here. They would select to pay. They may have an approval process on the back end before they cut a check. They can do that as well. And then of course they would cut the check. 
Uh, they can use their uh, pre-printed check doc, and they can also use blank check doc as well. Under general ledger here, um, the main thing we was there that we talked about was kind of the financial reports. We actually already hit on that. But this is where they could manage their GL accounts, create a journal entry, things of that nature. Uh, platform services allows for them to create custom fields in one site accounting. So maybe there's a field in for vendors that we don't have. They can come in here, create a custom field, and then use the ad hoc reporting tool in here to be able to report on that custom field. Management fees, they can come in here and create and manage, calculate their management fees. Makes it really simple, automatically pulls the information in for them and will automatically calculate those management fees. They're huge for fee managers and even huge for owner managers just because they may char be charging back fees back to the property. Loan maintenance here. Loan maintenance allows them to enter in all of their loans, set up amortization schedules. And, and manage the, the, their loans through here as well. Financial analysis, when you show our clients this, they love this. It's one of the neatest things for them. So what happens is at the end of the month, they'll get an income statement. And you would have to write why you were over or under in a particular area. You would have to typically handwrite it out. You used to have to handwrite it out. Now they export it into Excel and put it into Excel and then regroup it all together. With the financial analysis tool, it gives a portal for the properties to log into. They put in basically here what they want uh, to see. Um, so if, if something's over 5% and they want to comment, it just shows them that one line item that's over 5%. So it's not showing them all of the line items in the income statement. It's just showing those items that they want comments written on for. So they set up what those parameters are. The property logs into a portal. They key in their comments and then they regenerate that information out. Uh, so everything we've seen so far is what you get with one site accounting. Um, there are some additional modules that they can purchase. There's an accounts receivable module. Um, that's if maybe they have a separate business out there. So maybe they have a landscaping business on the side. Uh, or uh, you know maybe it's a, a property management company that wants to charge back fees to the properties as well. They can use this accounts receivable module to do that. Fixed assets. Um, they can manage, so earlier we talked about assets from the property perspective, and that's tracking really the warranty expiration. This is, as, this is uh, fixed assets where they're tracking and managing um, tax depreciation value and things of that nature, so it can automatically calculate the depreciation value and you can post that. Investment management, so you have companies out there that have different investors out there, and so let's say, for example, that Tracy and I are two different investors into ABC Management Company. She has 50% stake in it. I have 50% stake in it. We don't want to know how the property as a whole is doing financially. I want to know how my 50% of my stake in that property is doing. So investment management allows for you to report on that information. Okay. Um, you can import information in. You can import AP, AP bills. There's also a positive pay process in here. And then there, I can never say that, right? But there's the, the, the last one reporting there as well. So um, there is help. So we talked about help in leasing and rents. There is also help in one set accounting. The difference here, the, there's dynamic help for each page, like there is in leasing and rents. But we do, in one set accounting, when one set accounting, offer live chat help that connects them directly to, to the help desk and they can, you know, help and, and all that information in, okay? And um, that is that is our help desk here in Carrollton, not anywhere else. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a bookmark section so they can bookmark their top 10, top 15 locations that they like. The search feature is very much like a Google type search. I could put in $100 there and it would give me back anything and everything that had $100 in it, the line item, a bill, a payable, you name it, it's going to bring back a $100. Um, or you can search for a, a bill if you wanted to as well. So uh, that's pretty much accounting. Any questions there? I think that means you did a great job, Emily. And we are at the bottom of the hour, which we set this from 10 to 11.30. So we'll end it there. But if you have follow-up questions, please feel free to email me, Tracy Dean. And if you have additional requests for demos or specific product 
overviews, let me know. We may already have recordings I can point you to, or we can certainly do some follow-up uh, presentations as needed. We, we really feel strongly about sharing our knowledge with the entire company, and we've got some great SEs. Uh, Emily, certainly one of the best. So we thank you for participating today, and Emily, thank you so much for your time and expertise, as always. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.